we would like to thank you, thank the organization for giving us this opportunity to be here today uh, to present our paper, The Use of Text in the Higher Education Online Foreign Language Classroom, the case of, of Universidade Aberta. We are four language teachers from Universidade Aberta in Portugal, and we are just briefly going to introduce ourselves first. My name is Margarida Martins and I teach English levels uh, B21 to C12 at Universidade Aberta. Um, and my colleagues are now going to introduce themselves. Well, my name is Katja Götsch and I'm teaching German as a foreign language at Universidade Aberta and the levels are A1 to A2.B1. Hello, I'm Isabel Simões Marques and I'm an assistant professor at Universidade Aberta. I teach the six levels of French, French 1 to French 6, as well as translation practice in the third year of the undergraduate degree in applied languages. Um, Hi, hello everybody. My name is Ana Setien and I'm a Spanish uh, teacher at Universidad de Aberta. And I also teach uh, the six levels of the language, which include levels A1.2 till uh, B2. And having us presented ourselves, I'm just going to uh, present a background of our teaching and, and work at Universidad de Aberta. Um, Universidad Aberta is the youngest of Portuguese public universities. It was so I would like to uh, provide with some background on our teaching context. Uh, Universidad Aberta is the youngest of Portuguese universities. It was founded in 1988. And it is, uh, it, its aim was to make learning opportunities available to mature students um, in Portugal and to the Portuguese speaking communities spread around the globe. This Institute of Higher Education has undergraduate and graduate courses, as well as a school of continuous education and operates at a distance and entirely online since 2008. Um, there are four foreign languages being taught, which are uh, as we have said in our introductions, English, French, German, and Spanish, on offer for undergraduates who must do from two to four compulsory language courses over four to six semesters, depending on the degree they are enrolled in. So our teaching practices uh, are based on the university virtual pedagogical model through which the principal of distance learning online are defined and by which teachers and students must abide. All courses in the degrees are delivered through the learning platform Moodle, which teachers, students and non-teaching staff have access to. In the case of the foreign languages, there are six levels. German goes from A1 to, A to B1, French and Spanish go all the way to B2, and English uh, goes from initiate A1 to C1.2. And students are enrolled in classes of 25, depending on their level. The courses follow a study guide, which students have access to at the beginning of, the, of each semester, where the objectives, the program, resources, assessment, and calendar are outlined in detail. Moodle has a number of internal and external resources and tools that go from uh, forum, quizzes, podcast lessons, and so on, which can be used to upload and create activities, and teachers complement their teaching program with different interactive and collaborative tasks. So now I pass on to my uh, colleague, Margarida. During the pandemic, as we all know, most, if not all, institutions worldwide had to readjust their technology methodologies to online teaching at rapid speed. And even at Universidad Aberta, a number of academic and administrative uh, procedures had to be adapted to the reality of lockdown and social distancing. Exams which were administered at the university were moved to online, for example. The result was that an already established distance and online learning university was faced with the challenge of proving the effectiveness of its virtual model 
and methodologies with a new educational paradigm where many comparisons were being made. In the field of language learning at the higher level, uh, Universidad Aberta is unique in Portugal. However, due to the pandemic, we too made an effort, uh, uh, were made to reflect on our methods and strategies and look for ways to innovate and remain as a reference in this field of education and in our case, in the teaching of foreign languages online. In sum, in this paper, we are going to discuss the use of text in language teaching and demonstrate through uh, sample activities done with classes in 220-221, how we use text in our online foreign language classroom. Anne Ediger states that, and I quote, reading is probably the most important skill for second language learners in academic contexts, end of quote. It is also one of the most challenging skills to teach in the online foreign classroom when teaching is done at a distance and asynchronously. However, when the most appropriate teaching strategies are developed for a specific group of students and their learning context, then reading texts and using them for different activities has proved to help in the acquisition of other language skills and knowledge, even in e-learning. Teaching through and with texts involves development of all the language skills, since when a text is used in the class, students practice their reading, speaking, and pronunciation, reading out loud, writing, and grammar, as well as increase their range of vocabulary. Furthermore, other competencies are also developed since reading involves understanding of language and symbols, interpretation, which is also based on the reader's social cultural background and the acquisition and application of different types of knowledge. And I quote, the ability to read, taking general comprehension as the example, requires that the reader draw information from a text and combine it with information and expectations that the reader already has, end of quote. Teaching reading and developing complementary skills that working with the narrative involved or text involves differs in the L1 and L2 classroom. For the purpose of this paper, paper we are going to focus on the use of text in, with foreign language learners in an e-learning context, exploring different strategies and activities used in four different languages taught at undergraduate level at Universidade Aberta in Portugal. There are many different types of texts that can be used in the foreign language classroom from longer to shorter ones, fiction and non-fiction. Examples of texts which are used in the language classroom include excerpts from novels, short stories, poems, plays, newspaper or magazine articles, interviews, blogs, uh, reviews, websites, reports, letters, recipes and menus, diaries, jokes, it's messages, along with many other also available on the internet today. But there are also other types of texts which may be used in the foreign language classroom, which include a combination of images, signs, and written languages, written language, such as comics or graphic novels, maps, schedules, ads, forms, signs, etc. Texts can be used to explore all kinds of subjects from more specific to more literary or artistic or more trivial. And there are numerous activities which can be done with the text as a starting point and which will help students develop every one of the language skills. The selection of teaching materials will always, will always answer a pedagogical criteria as well as take into account the student's foreign language level. We believe that ideally in the second language classroom text should be short since short, and I quote, short texts provide opportunity to focus in detail on aspects of reading, nominal and pronominals, direct references, allusion, imagery, inference making, use of schemata, listening and speaking, vocabulary, grammar, and even writing skills in ways that a full length text may not, end of quote. In a foreign language classroom, in a school, university, or other, students can perform different class, group, or individual activities using a text. The teacher is also always present to correct pronunciation, to help with any vocabulary which is not clear, and to work on interpretation and analysis with the students. In distance and online learning, working with texts 
whether as reading practice to do vocabulary activities, comprehension, or interpretation of characters and events, the teacher has to not only work with students to understand language and content, but also explore different strategies and the most adequate, adequate tools for teaching online. Fortunately, nowadays, there are a number of content development ads um, apps and, and tools such as learning platforms, online quizzes, audio and video recording tools, presentation tools, social media blogs, and many others which aid in the development of teaching learning materials to be used online. When teaching reading, we, te we tend to combine both bottom up both bottom-up understanding of lexicon, syntax, structure, phrases, collocations, and top-down meaning, comprehension, interpretation, analysis, processing. And while bottom-up processing will generally be taught or aided by a teacher or inferred from context in a similar way from student to student, in top-down processing, students will produce very different readings and interpretations of the text. I'm going to keep going, but this is a, a quote from Doug, Douglas Brown on this, this subject. Furthermore, in his research on free voluntary reading, integrating reading into the, the, into the language classroom, Krashen found that, and I quote, reading programs are also effective for vocabulary development, grammar test performance, writing, oral language, oral and oral, oral language ability, end of quote. There are many different types of activities with text which can be used in the classroom, traditional virtual, to practice and encourage language and interpretation skills. Reading comprehension activities are the most common where a student reads a text on any subject according to the language level and then answers questions which are meant to assess understanding of the content. According to Nieto, uh, reading comprehension activities can be considered as a synergy between different components, vocabulary acquisition, analysis, previous knowledge that are meant to guide, help and facilitate the reading comprehension process for the foreign language reader. Tasks and question types in reading comprehension include true or false, multiple choice or extensive, long, short and long answers, um, review, analysis, and summaries, which high, higher level students can also do. This, uh, these last ones are top-down activities and they can be done with literary texts as well. Texts can be further explored through their use of language. Students can do different, students can do um, different vocabulary and grammar activities to help them understand the text and enhance their linguistic knowledge. Some examples of these activities used in our virtual classroom are closed exercises for either vocabulary or verb tense using passages from the text, rewriting sentences using different grammatical structures, looking for synonyms and antonyms in the text or finding mistakes in a passage. But other skill developing activities may be created from texts, for example, it is possible to teach structure by jumbling paragraphs students then have to put in order adding titles to different sections, dictation to work on spelling, and reading out loud to practice tone, intonation, and pronunciation. With higher level students, it is also possible to focus on figures of speech and idiomatic language, such as metaphors, similes, and analogies, for example, as well as on, as on the importance of punctuation for adding of effect to the written word, aiding in their own language skills. There are a lot of activities teachers can use to teach through and with texts. But there are also strategies students can learn to improve their reading and to develop skills which help them to recognize, comprehend, analyze and interpret language and context. Stu students can learn how to cope with not understanding the meaning of every word in a text, how to scan a text for information, can be particularly useful in a text or exam, how to group ideas, semantic mapping or clustering, 
or how to synthesize main ideas. Texts can also be used to teach social, cultural, and intercultural skills, giving readers of a cultural background or immersed in a specific social cultural setting, the possibility of engaging with a different social and or cultural reality. In this sense, reading texts and working with them in the foreign language classroom can promote empathy for other cultures and social backgrounds, raise awareness on different social cultural issues, as well as, and I quote, encourage positive attitudes towards the understanding of speakers of foreign language and their way of life, end of quote. Furthermore, as also discussed by Byram and Fleming, promoting the teaching of intercultural skills, and we will argue through the use of texts, has a reflective role which helps readers, foreign language students, to understand themselves, their society, culture, and identity. And finally, besides the development of intercultural awareness through texts, students are also engaged in a systematic development of metacognitive and critical awareness processes. When creating a task or activity on the learning platform, it is essential to define objectives, skills to be developed, criteria in the case of, a, of an assessed activity, structure and duration. Once this is done, it is necessary to select the tools and resources which are going to be used. Defining objectives also includes selecting the text according to content, matter, linguistic difficulty and length. And I quote, after goals and priorities are determined, texts and topics can be selected and tasks designed with an eye toward creating a meaningful, motivating and challenging curriculum. In an online teaching, in online teaching, this sort of activity is called an e-tivity, a term introduced in 2002 by Jilly Salmon from the Open University in the UK to define an online based online based collaborative activity that is student centered. According, according to Solomon, activities, and I quote, focus on the learner, the people I call the participants who are contributing, providing, reworking, interpreting, combining most of the knowledge. They overturn the idea that learning depends on one big expert and his or her conveying of knowledge. They are based on the strongest idea that knowledge is constructed by learners through and with other learners. This type of, end of quote, this type of collaborative activity is effective in the online foreign language classroom because not only does it encourage participation and engage students in a debate and in the sharing of information, but also promote language learning and the acquisition of skills. We are now going to demonstrate how texts are used in the foreign language classrooms according to the following sequence. And we are going to start with my colleague Katja in German. Um, I'm going to uh, briefly present uh, an activity, a text-based activity that was used in, um, uh, recently used in the A2B1 German class, and it was based on a web text, uh, Handy Knickerverbote und Benimmregeln für das Smartphone, and um, of course there is a reference to the famous treatise that um, Adolf Freiherr von Knicke published in the 18th century about social skills and good conduct. Um, the, main, uh, the main objective of this assessed activity used in an A2B1 level class, students um, had to engage in a series of tasks using the above mentioned text um, as a starting point and students had to produce uh, a short learner text. Um, I'm sorry, my battery. Avenida Padres. In this activity, students had to produce a short learner text and an audio with their oral productions for assessment. And one of the objectives uh, was to raise students' sensitivity and awareness for different cultural norms and expectations with respect to the use of smartphones. And since the activity was going to be assessed, 
um, the link to the website and the instructions were incorporated in a document available in a digital device called eFolio A, um, equipped with a timer, where students could download the document and later uh, upload their assignment uh, within a predefined limited period of time. Um, they had to uh, demonstrate um, the following skills, the, the ability to comprehend more factual information in a German text on a familiar subject of interest, provided they had time for reading. Um, they had to demonstrate the necessary knowledge of vocabulary and of syntax to comprehend the main information from a short authentic German text from the internet and the capability to express ideas and their points of view in written and oral language using structures and vocabulary according to the A to B1 level. Um, they also had to demonstrate the capability to reflect upon cultural norms and taboos existing in their own culture. And finally, they had to demonstrate the capability to change perspectives and to identify, to reflect upon, and to recognize cultural norms existing in other cultures. Um, as a tool, um, digital, a digital device with a timer was used where students downloaded the PDF with a link and the instructions and where students submitted their work. I'll now give, um, I'll try to give a short description of the task. Um, the assessed activity itself consisted of two main parts with part one focusing on oral production and part two focusing on reading and writing. Um, however, before the assessed activity was made available, students have been working for two weeks on the subject, social media and everyday life by doing the activities in the textbook and the workbook. And these textbook activities, they were com complemented and extended by two learning activities provided in the virtual classroom, where students, among other things, were asked to do some um, activities based on authentic text from the internet. Um, the links and instructions that were provided in the virtual classroom by the device resource. And among the websites that students had to consult was also the website of the assessed activity. Therefore, by the time students started to work on the assess activity, they were already familiar with the kind of text, with the subject and vocabulary. Besides, they had already done some reflection on the subject. The assessed activity itself, as I've already mentioned, had two parts. In part one, students had to listen to an audio where 10 situations involving the use of smartphones were presented to them. Students were asked, um, how they would react in those situations and they had to justify their choices. And students were then asked to take some notes, answer orally and record the answers on an audio file. In part two, students were asked to read the text Handy Knicke Verbote und Benimmregeln für das Smartphone, available on the internet. Um, as I've already mentioned, a text about the correct use or correct conduct of smartphones in everyday life. And, and then students had to respond to three written tasks. Firstly, they had to compare social and legal norms and taboos existing in their own home country with those referred to in the <clears throat> web text. And then students had to identify, reflect upon and discuss cultural similarities and differences. Secondly, they had to paraphrase two terms mentioned in the text and finally, they were asked to present some further suggestions for the good use of smartphones in public. And as I've already mentioned in part two, students had to produce a short text. Um, the assessment cr criteria used were um, the understanding of the main ideas of the web text, correct use of language in both written and oral form, considering, of course, the course level A to B1, and the ability to express their ideas in written and spoken form, taking into account uh, the course level. Another assessment criteria was the creativity and critical re reflection on cultural similarities and differences. Um, 
students had four days uh, to do the activity. And with respect to teacher engagement, the activity was student centered. Uh, however, the teacher monitored the whole activity and in the end graded both the oral production and the learner text and provided feedback. Um, just a short follow up. Um, the group in which um, this activity was applied is very, is very heterogeneous in various respects. Some students have lived or currently are living in a German speaking country or in a country where German is one of the official languages. And other students are living in, in a different linguistic and cultural context abroad. And some, a few of them are actually living in Portugal. However, most of the students who choose German as a foreign language at Universidad Aberta have already studied at least one other foreign language before. For most of them, it is the second, third, or even the fourth foreign language. Therefore, when it comes to reading texts, they can build on their linguistic competences acquired in other foreign languages. They've developed some kind of language learning um, competence and they have strategies and they can resort to. So um, they actually, they, they have a lot of uh, strategies already settled. The diversity of the group is um, coming to an end. The diversity of the group is reflected in the diversity of the text and of the audience that students produce. And students really seem to find the subject interesting and, and some of them got really engaged in the activity. Um, so much about the German activity. I'll now pass uh, the word on to my colleague, Isabel. Um, so the activity I'm going to present is called Back to Childhood, and it's aimed at learners of French 4, uh, so B1.2. The text chosen for this activity is to the work Le Petit Nicolas by Sampe Gossini, extracts from chapter one, A Souvenir qu'on va chérir, a memory we will cherish. For this activity, we have three main objectives. The first one is communicative, as it allows the students to tell an event or memory in the past tense. The second objective is linguistic, with the use of the past tense imparfait, passé proposé plus que parfait, but also the concordance of tenses, the direct and indirect style, as well as chronological and temporal markers. The third objective is cultural because it allows us to see or re -see the French school system, the typical characters in the classroom, but also the class photos, the sociology of first names, and the 60s and 50s in France. We aim at three competences through the different activities proposed, namely writing comprehension, writing comprehension, and oral production. Excerpts from the book Le Petit Nicolas in PDF format, as well as various non-literally authentic documents such as images, illustrations by Sampé, poster for the film Le Petit Nicolas, class photos, and videos like trailer for the film Le Petit Nicolas, excerpts from the film, video clip of the song, uh, On n'est pas une bêtise près by Renan Luce. Sempe and Gossini stories composed of both uh, the text and an image that explains it. Le Petit Nicolas is considered a classic of French children's literature, and it's interesting to study it in the context of a work of narrative. It's like a collection of short stories, each chapter functioning independently, but using the same characters. The story is told by the young protagonist, Nicolas, which gives the text a light, a very naive tone, which is at the origin of the comic vein. Thus, many themes relating to childhood are present in the text and allow the reader to feel concerned and to identify with the characters very easily. Furthermore, Le Petit Nicolas has been adapted to other media, comic strips, film adapt adaptations, cartoons, etc. He is therefore interesting to be able to draw on these different sources for this activity. Finally, the author, 
the author, René Goscinny, is also the creator of all the key characters in French culture, such as Asterix and Is No Good. There is very interesting from a cultural point of view. Our main objective is to get the learners to know how to tell an anecdote in the past tense by currently mastering the concordance of tenses. We ensure the cohesion and coherence of their production. To achieve our objective, it's necessary to review the formation and use of the passé composé and the imparfait. We focus on situations in which one of the two tenses is privileged to the detriment of the other. We also work on the transition from direct to indirect speech and vice versa. Our learners are able to report the words in the third person on their narrative. The extra student allows us to take our cultural point relating to education, such as the French school system, the cliches on the characters that one can meet in the classroom, the class photo, which is very important when one is a child or parent. It seems interesting to us to briefly discuss the sociology of first names in relation to the names present in the chosen extract, most, most of which are now obsolete but were popular at the time of the novel's publication. Parallels can be drawn between French culture and that one of the learners. This should be put into perspectives of the 50s and the 60s in France. To begin the activity, which will last for two weeks, and to prepare the text for uh, beforehand, we first propose a speaking activity to the learners. We we'll put several class photos, one old, one recent, and one from the film Le Petit Nicolas, in the class forum, and we let them express themselves early by asking them the following questions. Who are the people on this photograph? Can you, what, what can you say about the times where these photos were taken? In the last photograph, the pupils are all wearing uniforms. Is this, is this still the case today in France or in your country? Why take a class photo? These last questions allow us to make the link between, uh, with the title of the short story, a memory we will cherish. This first activity mainly involving exchanges. It's an opportunity to review the lexicon that our learners need for a good understanding of the text. The lexicon relating to photography and school are also indicated in the forum. At the end of this first activity, I share the beginning of the film, which puts into images the text studied in the rest of the activity. And I also share the extract of the work, which will be worked on with the students. In order to work on reading comprehension, I have erased the verbs conjugated in the passé composé and imparfait. The learners must fill in the spaces with the correct tense. This activity allows us to go back over certain concepts that the learners may not have assimilated. For example, it should be checked that the subject verb inversion with speech verbs after direct speech is respected as often as possible. Another possible activity is related to the concordance of tenses in sentences that are in direct speech and indirect speech. As regards the written production activities, the first activity is part of the questioning of the text. We have chosen the extract in such a way that the story appears unfinished and incomplete. The learners are then asked to, ima to imagine the end of the story in a few lines using past tense, direct speech, and indirect speech. In the text extract studied, the protagonist Nicolas tells about the misfish of his little friends who can't behave. The mischievous character of the group of friends can be found in the video clip by Renan Luce, whose song On n'est pas une bêtise près is used as the theme song from the film adaptation of the novel Le Petit Nicolas. We can ask our learners to try to identify the characters in the video using the information in the text and to find Nicolas, Geoffroy, Agnon. Then we can start a discussion on the forum about children's mischief and ask our learners about the childhood and in particular the mischief they did, the memories they have of it. This writing activity developed from the song by Renan Luce requires students to write writing productions 
uh, on the following team, theme. Tell about a silly thing you did as a child and your parents' reaction. Use the appropriate past tense, direct speech and indirect speech. Approximately 215 words. Students should share the final work in the class forum. The extract and the novel itself are very enjoyable to read. The themes in the novel are timeless and touch on childhood and therefore are full of feelings, which allows the teacher to study with the work today as well as in five or ten years. The themes are con conducive to exchange and discussion. They allow learners to improve their production skills by expressing their opinions on topics that concern them and which they can, they can identify. Finally, from a cultural point of view, the novel offers learners uh, an insight into French societies in the 60s, the descriptions of the characters, the values, the habits of the French at the time, which should be developed further from this aspect. And now I give the word to my colleague Anna, who will speak for the Spanish activity. Thank you very much, Isabel. So I'm going to present the text that I worked with in my C1 level class. It was an opinion article named La Vida Empieza a los 40, which could be translated into something like Life Only Begins uh, at 40 by journalist, Argentinian journalist Hernán Casiari. <laughs> the objective in, in this case, um, which is uh, usually very, a very short group in which oral interaction via video conference tools is common, um, and which uh, also means that most uh, stu that, that students are exposed to a very large wide range of texts, both short and long, and we also read one short novel per semester. But before I continue on describing uh, the, the text activity that I propose to my students, I would like to comment on a very specific matter when teaching Spanish to Portuguese speakers. Well, both Portuguese and Spanish are proximity languages derived from Latin that also, also share common historic and language development processes. This reflects in the existence of many shared words that are, that are different in regards to their significant variations and also to frequency use. These similarities between both languages, grammar system and lexicon are perceived as an advantage by students first exposed to the formal le learning and language acquisition process. Nevertheless, as they advance on the language use, subtleties regarding the correct use and combination of words may arise and hinder the communication process. For that, we believe that teachers' systematic feedback and follow-up reveals itself, itself as absolutely necessary to secure the correct language acquisition. So back to the activity. Um, as I was saying, I, I used uh, an opinion article on uh, how the, the, the writer, the author, perceives the aging process related to the accomplishments of uh, life goals. It was available to students via a link to a Moodle, Moodle resource tool where they could uh, both read and listen to a recording of the article's text made by me. The main objective uh, or aim was the development of uh, reading fluency understood as the ability to read fast, precisely, and within the pronunciation and intonation patterns of the foreign language. In order to do so, a set of different activities was proposed, each of them with a specific learning objective that had to be achieved in order to produce the final activity. Um, this methodology responds to a task-based uh, approach that favors language learning through the development of activities where students use the language in context. Also, a forum was created in order to activate students' previous knowledge about the theme of the article by providing them with more material, which was a short movie, another opinion article, and some images of people growing up. Um, According to Mejia, reading comprehension is a process that demands the reader's active participation regarding knowledge construction processes and the implicit meanings in the, that the text may present. For that purpose, the reader's, the reader's previous knowledge and experiences result fundamental. 
having said that, these are the learning ob objectives for the activity. Students had to demonstrate the ability to correctly infer the main ideas and arguments of the proposed text. They had to demonstrate the cap capability to express ideas and arguments orally from a Spanish text. And also they had to identify phonetic differences between two varieties of Spanish, which is Spanish from Spain and Spanish from Argentina. Also the tools and resources uh, I used or we, we used as a group were a PDF or a link to the opinion article, a podcast, a podcast recorder, a forum, um, a, a GA5P activity, uh, a song and a short movie. Um, so for the last part of my presentation, I would like to uh, share my very fast, my can only think of the word in Portuguese, not, not in my screen, my screen, sorry. Okay. I believe I must be sharing my screen. I don't know if my colleagues could, yeah, thank you. So, uh, sorry, the, the, this is the, the activity that I was talking about. The activity was, uh, it had four parts. Um, part one, uh, ask the students to attentively read um, and listen to the to the text proposed, which is this one. Okay, and here is the the podcast that they could listen to in order to identify uh, Spanish phonetic, most characteristic sounds of of the Spanish phonetic system. So for part two, I proposed an activity, uh, a true false and a lexicon exploitation through the use of H5P activities with automatic feedback and correction. Um, they had to do two types of activities, true or false, which probably appears somewhere here, yeah. And also relate a uh, new lexicon to their definition. As for the third part, I wanted them to uh, review some of the grammar con uh, contents that usually uh, generate some uh, problems um, when assimilating them for Portuguese learners. I, I used the song to contextualize the, the activity. And then there is a fill in the gaps activity, which um, emphasizes the use of the past tenses and also new lexicon. Finally, they had to uh, audio record themselves through a, again, an H5P presentation. E, um, uh, in, in this case, the activity required individualized feedback by the teacher while, while the others had immediate feedback and correction um, or forum consultation as a way to verify their answers. So, Sorry, I just want to stop sharing my screen. That's it. So finally, uh, as for the assessment criteria, um, they had to uh, show that they had understood the article main ideas and arguments. They had to show that they know they knew how to use uh, language correctly and also show uh, the ability to express ideas in spoken form, including correct structure and pronunciation and the ability to diagnose some of the more, some of the phonetic differences between Spanish varieties. So I'm just going to go directly to the follow up. Um, as I said before, the follow-up included the students' ver verification of the hypothesis thrown when comparing language varieties. In order to do so, what I did was I posted a um, uh, written and oral text explaining the most significant differences in the activity forum. As for what um, uh, the CEFR states for C1 users of Spanish, from a communicative point of view, I believe the following have been worked on and achieved. The student is capable of understanding a great variety of, te of texts with some degree of difficulty and also to recognize implicit meanings in them. The student is capable of expressing him or herself fluently and spontaneously. The student is capable of making a flexible and correct use of the foreign language for social, professional or academic goals. And finally, the student can produce clear, well-structured oral or written texts showing a correct use of organization, articulation, a cohesion and cohesion text mechanisms. 
Um, so finally, I pass the word to my colleague, Margarida. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Um, okay. So in English, um, in the last level of English, uh, we used the short story by Haitian American writer Edwidge Danticat, One Thing, which was part of the New York Times Decameron project um, launched in 2020. Um, the short story was uploaded as a link at the beginning of the semester so students could begin individual reading at their own pace. And the forum was created for the activity where information on the Decameron project, on the author, and a link to her website and some context on the story was provided to students. Students had to demonstrate the ability, uh, demonstrate that they had the necessary knowledge of vocabulary and syntax or the ability to infer meaning in context, to read and analyze, and uh, necessary to read and, an and analyze an advanced level literary text. They had to demonstrate reading comprehension and interpretation skills for text in, in, in English demonstrate the ability to interpret characters, plot and meaning and demonstrate their capability to express ideas and arguments in written or spoken form on an, on an English text. Uh, tools which were used for this activity were the PDF of the short story or the link because they had, they had both, a forum, a quiz, um, PowerPoint, a Zoom, because we had an online class and an, an assignment device. There are four parts to this activity. The first three are collaborative and not assessed, whereas the third is individual and assessed. First part, using the podcast tool, students take turns reading one or two pages of the st short story and upload the, rec the recording as a podcast episode indicating page number. Once the whole story had been read, students have had not only practiced their speaking, but were also able to listen to an audio version of the story as they read. Part two, using the forum, students discuss different aspects of the story, including the characters, the setting, the author, style, and help each other with any doubts they may have on plot and meaning. The role of the teacher during this activity is to moderate, spark discussion, if it goes if the forum goes quiet and helps students with vocabulary. For vocabulary, it is also possible to create a quiz, um, which I did to help students to understand lexicon and idiomatic language in the text, which there was plenty of. In this part of the activity, the third part, the teachers, the, I, the teachers scheduled a synchronous session where the short story would be discussed. And finally, part four, at this stage, students who have been participating in the activities are familiar with the text. An assignment submission device is created and opened where students have an instruction sheet with guide guidelines on what to do next. They are required to do an oral review of the story with a focus on a specific aspect. This review should be five minutes maximum and they will be assessed on speaking skills, grammar, use of vocabulary, interpretation, structure and originality. Um, the complete task will take uh, three weeks. The first part is started in the first week but may continue throughout the remainder of the weeks. Part two and three are done in the second week and the third week is dedicated to part four. The tasks are mostly student-centered since the activity involves interpretation and students demonstrating their understanding of bottom-up and top-down processing. The teacher, however, is always present, either moderating forum discussions, listening to audios of pages from the story and correcting pronunciation whenever necessary and hosting the online class. The final task of the teacher is to listen to each, each review graded and provide valuable feedback. As a follow-up, I'd just like to add that it's important that students understand the reasons behind the choice of this text. This text used in, the, in, in this activity is a very recent short story published in 2020 on COVID-19 and its impact on relationships, family, rituals, as well as its altering effect on dreams and plans. Although no reference is made to the virus itself, there are a number of signs in the story that are representative of the virus. Most students were not very excited about having to discuss COVID. 
nonetheless, they were able to approach the story through different readings and the end result was a wonderful collection of reviews and analyses of the story, its meaning, its metaphors and the representations of the reality we have been living over the past year. Text used for this level correspond to a C1 of the um, Common European Framework for Languages due to their narrative, linguistic and figurative complexity and are intended to give students a broader knowledge of the English language and of Anglophone literatures. Among the texts used for this level are stories by writers from the UK, Ireland, USA, Canada, Nigeria, India, Pakistan and the Caribbean. The choice of these texts also has the aim of raising student awareness and increasing knowledge and empathy of other cultures, social realities, immigrant experience, war, trauma, illness, identity, and the possibility of new beginnings, topics which are in the course syllables. One final word on the text is the importance of teaching students also about the variety of English as represented in these narratives. Thank you. So working with different types of texts, short stories, articles, graphic novels or comics and others has given us the possibility of not only exploring how to use writing language to develop all the skills, but also as online teachers to explore different tools and strategies to teach through text in a virtual learning environment. The pandemic sparked reflection, bringing us closer as a team, working co collaboratively and reflecting on theory, practice and the sharing of experiences. For students as well, the type of activities we developed over the past year gave students the space and place to work co collaboratively in an effort to explore and develop their individual language skills. We hope this presentation has provided an overview of our work at Universidad de Berta within our foreign language group and finally a glimpse into what we do in our classes according to language and level. Thank you. Muito obrigada. Thank you. Thank you.